Why, hello, everybody. My name is Jordan F. Shepley, and this is Draw My Life. My story began in 1860 when I was born in St. Louis, and I was raised by my two parents. My dad was a lawyer, and my mother was a teacher. Their names were John and Mary. Since my parents loved each other so much, they had six kids in total. That was a pretty big family. When I was 18, I went to MIT for college and majored in architecture in Cambridge, Massachusetts. After I graduated, I found myself working with another architect who owned a company in Boston. He was a pretty big guy and reminded me a lot of Santa Claus, but sadly, he wasn't. He was just another architect named Henry Hobson Richardson. He built a bunch of buildings already, like the Trinity Church, but seriously, who's going to remember some church? In Richardson's company, I met two of my bros there. One was a little bossy and kind of stubborn, and the other was insecure. Ironically, they were both named Charles, but everyone just calls them by their last name, Roten and Coolidge. After hearing the news of Richardson's death, the entire company didn't know what to do. We were all in shock and then in grief because we had lost such a great architect. Then the company told me that they named me head of the Richardson company. This threw me off completely. I asked myself, could I really do this? Am I ready? As a result, I took the position, made both Charles my partners, and changed the name from Richardson to Shepley, Rutan, and Coolidge. Okay, now let's backtrack a little. While we were all at Richardson's funeral, I saw the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. She had beautiful eyes, perfect lips, and short curly hair. Then I found out she was actually Richardson's daughter, Julia. And then we started having feelings for each other. Oh man, if he was still alive now, he would have killed me. But that's okay, because a few years later, we got married. Then one day in 1901, I was walking down the streets of Boston when I saw a flyer that said architects needed in Buffalo. Apparently Buffalo wanted to make themselves look cooler than they already were, so they call it the Pan American Exposition. So, me and my boys flew, I mean, rode from Boston to Buffalo. <laughs> Look at that carriage I drew, it's so bad. As we got there, we were all assigned a building and I got the agriculture building. Well, I got the manufacturing and liberal arts building too, but that doesn't really matter right now. The agriculture building has a red tiled roof, detailed green archways, blue accents here and there, and yellow walls. This building was 500 feet wide, 150 feet tall, and the building was a Spanish Renaissance style. In total, the building costed $90,000. Along with that, I had an assistant with me. Her name was Adelaide Thorpe. Although she may look sweet on the outside, she was a total you-know-what. She even made my workers terrified of working on this building. Besides that, she mainly organized the decorations with tapestries that described good husbandry and scenes of farm life. She even added flags from South America so everything looked so pretty and festive and stuff. We also had displays that showed minerals, wood, birds, fur, hats, and coffee from Central and South America. Then on May 1st, 1901, the Pan American Exposition opened. So many people came to this event and even complimented my building saying that it was a necessary compliment to the electric tower. The colors go really well together. It's a really simple design. Some even thought that we could be good trading partners between America and Central and South America. Some would even say that this building is so plain. Some would even call it the Sour or the Reaper. I was really proud of myself because it was all thanks to you guys, the 8 million people that came to the expo and really liked my work. All I can say is thank you. You guys inspired me to keep on doing what I love and I made so many good memories there. Well, except McKinley getting shot in the head. <laughs>